Have you ever tried maple syrup? It's delicious on your pancakes, of course, but maple syrup is also the main ingredient in maple candy, maple sugar, as well as other delicious treats. But where do all of these maple products come from? There are many stages involved in the process of bringing maple syrup to market, but it all starts with a tree. Let's investigate how a maple tree produces sap. It starts from a spinning helicopter seed. Eventually, that seed can grow into a sapling, then ultimately into a mature tree. The tree must be big and have grown for 30 years or more before it is ready to be tapped and can produce enough sap for us to make maple syrup. In the summer, the leaves of maple trees use sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce sugar. The tree converts the sugar into starch, which is stored in the tree's roots, trunk, and branches. As water is pulled into the roots of the tree, some of the starch is converted back to sugar and added to the sap. Sap then moves the sugar around in the tree during the spring. Sap in a sugar maple tree is sweeter than the sap of most other trees. Apparently, the tree has a sweet tooth. This is a sugar maple tree. In winter and early spring, the tree has no leaves. It is what we call dormant. This is a thermometer. Right now, the temperature is right at freezing, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Watch what happens to our sugar maple tree as the temperature rises above, then falls below freezing. The temperature ranging back and forth above and below freezing is what allows sap to run in a sugar maple tree. This is a pressure gauge. When the dial points below the zero, there is a vacuum or suction pulling water into the tree, like when you breathe in. When the dial points above the zero, there is positive pressure, pushing sap out of any hole in the tree, like when you breathe out. A healthy maple tree produces surplus sap, more food than it needs, enough sap to share with us. This is a sap bucket, used by many maple producers to collect sap from the sugar maple tree. Sometimes maple producers use a system of plastic pipes to collect the sap too. A small hole is drilled in the tree, a spout is inserted, and a bucket is hung. The sap drips into the bucket. If the temperature stays warm long enough, the tree gradually empties itself of its extra sap. The pressure drops and the sap stops running until it freezes again. The tree repeats the cycle with every freeze, developing suction in the tree and again filling itself with sap. Next time it warms up, the sap will run again. Temperature is a primary factor in developing the tree pressure that makes sap run. There are other factors too, such as wind, rain, sun, barometric pressure, and soil moisture. These factors affect the small branches in the tree more than the trunk of the tree that we easily see from the ground. Sap, on its own, is not very sweet. It takes about 45 gallons of sap to be boiled down to make one gallon of syrup. Maple producers tap anywhere between one tree to over 100,000 trees, depending on how much syrup they want to make. The trees have done their part generously sharing their winter food store with us. While the trees greet a new spring, maple producers finish the job of bringing maple syrup to your table.